1933. 1933. It's been a long time since I first looked out into this valley in southern Utah and said to myself, Tom Eggers, this is sure pretty country, ain't it? How'd you like to live here and have your own place where there's plenty of gold and trout in the streams and lots of deer in the hills? Forget all your worries. Raise your own food and be your own boss. 25 years ago, I made up my mind I'd make this place my home. Find a wife, raise a family, maybe a son. But in a few years, things changed. Nature had given us a lot, but gradually she began to take it away. The cool rains became hot, dry winds. Now, we have a drought and depression. But like the fellow said, there's some good in everything. I wouldn't be happy anywhere else. I love this country. And I'm gonna stick it out till things get better, even if all I have to live on is the bounty you get for killing the big cat.
on that mountain? Where'd you come from? A big lion jumped me from up there. I've been tracking that cat ever since sunup. Just when I get him in my sights, you have to come along. If you know what's good for you, you'll hit the road and keep going. But I was only trying to... Shut up and get out of here. Where you said, Pa. Huh? All in the known, boy. Pa never misses. <laughs> well, let's get it stripped down. With Jim. Get to work up along that side there. After the cat? Yeah. Pulled my calf down last night. Did you get him, Mr. Riggers? Did he get him? <laughs> you want to bet? I had him right in my sights, and along comes some city kid, and I... A city kid? Up here? Yeah, up here. He was carrying a suitcase, just like it was walking down Main Street. Tom, why don't you own up that cat's too smart for you? Take a better shot than you're ever going to be to collect that bounty. <laughs> you think so? Groceries home, I'll come back and give you a hand. Get up.
flies on credit till the fall, till the fall. Then they take him by the hand and they lead him to the land. And the merchant is the man who gets it all. The farmer is the man. The farmer is the man. Going somewhere, young fella? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm looking for Tom Eggers' place. Tom Eggers? You'll never get there. Why not? You're going the wrong way. I can take you right to his gate. Unless you're dead set on walking. Not me. Thank you. Thanks a lot, mister. Yeah. Jim, Henry. You know, I walked all the way over from Cedar Breaks. On the trail back there, a big mountain lion jumped on me. He just missed me, too. Hey, you're lucky. Quickest killers in the forest, them cougars. Doing a lot of damage to stock, too. Oh, here. Here's a match. Well, what are you trying to do? Want to start a forest fire? One spark in this whole country go up in flames. Everything's dry as tinder around here. Oh, I'm sorry. I... I didn't know. The trees all look so green. Yeah, pines are always green. That don't mean they won't burn. Especially when we've had no rain. Oh, the country certainly looks pretty to me. Yeah. Pretty or not pretty. You know, there ain't a blade of grass for a cow to eat. Where are you from? Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Feeling the depression back there? Sure are. I haven't had a job in six months. It's mighty rough here. We're right in the middle of the worst drought we've ever had. All our water's dried up. Except in the lake back at Tom's place. Oh, I've heard a lot about that lake. That's where I'm hoping to get a job with Tom Eggers, in the tan bark business. You know, my mother used to tell me that when she was a girl... Does your mother live here? Well, she did when she was a girl. I'm Danny Turner, Lucy Hawk's son. You're... Oh! Well... Here's where I turn off. Take this road here. Turn right. Take you right to Tom's place. But I thought you said you'd take Tom's mail. I picked it up in town. Get up. Oh, I must hold the meat on my axe to the left. Hey, my coat. Oh. Hi. is going down in history as the worst depression here that this America has ever seen. He I told don't me... care about history. What did you get for the calf? Calf? Well, he wasn't very big. He was five months old. Well, we couldn't fatten him up. Matt Cooper, how much did you get? Fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. That's less than seven cents a pound. Mary's the best I could do. It's a 
lot better than nothing. Dara, shut up that whistling and go and see if them hens have laid some eggs. Matt, bring the groceries in. Hey, who do you think I met up with today? Picked him up on the road and gave him a ride. Who? Danny Turner, Lucy Hawks' boy. A boy? How old is he? Oh, about 20. Is he good looking? Well, I guess you'd call him that. He's a spitting image of Lucy. Who's Lucy? Doris, what did I tell you? Yes, Where is he, at Gill's? No, Tom's. Tom's? Went there looking for a job. Tom's so broke he could use a job himself. Yeah. What do you suppose Gill will do? I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if this didn't lead to a killing. Keep your shirt on. Got a lot of nerve busting in here like it was your own place. All I did was take a little water. A little water? I have to pack that a half a mile. Pack it? Yeah, pack it. Carry it. Well, you got a pump right over there. The well's dry. Well, how was I to know? I'm no mind reader. First I get blamed for being jumped by a lion, then I get pushed out of a wagon, and now I get thrown out of here. If this is your western hospitality, you can, you can have it. I'll be lucky if I'm not shot before I get to Tom Ager's place. You already got to it. I'm Tom Eggers. You're... Yeah. What about it? I'm Danny Turner. Turner? I sent you a telegram two weeks ago. I guess this is it. she ever did talk about, especially when things weren't going right for her. She... What about your father? He was killed by a truck a long time ago. I... I didn't hear about it. I mean, the mother didn't write to me or anything. I'll get you some supper. Thank you, Mr. Eggers. I uh, guess you'll have to take pot luck. I'm too busy to go to town. I don't care what it is, just so there's plenty of it. I'm pretty hungry. Water. Told you I have to carry the half a mile. Put it there by the door. 
Why, Sonny, we'll use it to wash you before we go to church. Yeah. Tomorrow is Sunday. You know, I've never seen so many stars in Philadelphia. Yeah. I'd trade them all for one good rain cloud. By the way, what are you doing in this neck of the woods? Oh, I heard so much about it, I guess I just had to see it. I guess you know how rough things are in the city now. Yeah, I heard a little about it. Must be pretty bad. Well, that's why I came out here to ask you. What was that? Big cat. Is that the same one that jumped me this morning? Must have been. Are there any others around? I don't think so. I haven't seen signs of any but this big one. He wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the drought. Down here looking for water. Good boy, Spike. That's the same cat. Biggest pad marks I ever saw. Howdy! Hi, Doris. Come over and look at the cat track. Lose any stock last night? Not as I know of. Well, that cougar's been raiding again. Look, Doris. Over here, he made a jump of nearly 20 feet. Figure he must be close to eight feet long. Big cat. Big enough to pull down one of our milk cows. Yeah, while Tom fiddles around making excuses. Oh, now, Gil. Well, that was the bargain, wasn't it? He was going to get the cat while we work on the dam. Stop worrying. I'll get it. Sure, after we lost half our stock. What are you squawking about? Me and Matt's the only ones lost any stock. Now, this is no time to argue. Hello there, young fella. Hello. Oh, you know Matt Cooper, huh? Yeah, from Matt yesterday. Wants to meet the folks. That's my wife. How do you do, Mrs. Cooper? Howdy. This is my daughter, Doris. Pleased to meet you. Same here. Pop says you're Danny Turner. Your mother used to live here, but her name wasn't Turner, was it? This is Wid. Wid. Howdy. I'm Jim. Jim. Pleased to meet you. You say your name was Turner? Yes, sir. Danny Turner. Looks a lot like Lucy, don't he? Are you Lucy's boy? Yes. Where is she? Where's your mother? Lucy's dead. Well, as far as I'm concerned, she's been dead for 20 years. Man to goodness, it's, it's way past meeting time. Yeah, bless if it isn't. When would you get time. here? Yesterday. I'm staying with Mr. Eggers. What the devil's he doing at your place? What business is it of yours? Why, Wait, let's stop the arguing, both of you. This is meeting ground. Everybody, take your places. Gil. Tom. Bible says, six days shalt thou work, but on the seventh thou shalt rest. Well, the Lord knows we need the rest. But, but being the Almighty, he, uh, well, he, he also knows that we need our water piped down to our cattle and our stock. 
or there won't be nothing left. Likewise, knowing that every minute counts, well, he won't mind if we make this meeting short. So we'll just start out by offering up a prayer. good at this, as you can tell by listening to me, but we're here to ask you to bless us, especially Tom Eggers for letting us have the use of the water which is on his property. I know we haven't always been friendly enough or neighborly enough. There's often a dry spell in our hearts, like in the land, but if each of us is willing to forgive our enemy, then maybe you'll see fit to end this drought. Amen. Well, how do you like that, Church? It's pretty wonderful. Come along, boy. You're going home with me. Why should I? Well, I'm your uncle, ain't I? Uncle? You haven't been my uncle for 20 years. That's telling him, Danny. You keep out of this, Tom Eggers. As long as he's living under he my roof. He shouldn't come to me in the first place. You get the same kind of treatment you gave Lucy? I can take care of myself. I won't have no hawks beholden to Tom Eggers. I'm not a hawks, I'm a turner. Did you hear that, Gil? Sock him, Pa. Shut up. Come on, Danny. Go on home. Isn't he just wonderful? tried to buy the water off my land for his cattle. I couldn't agree to that, because it would have taken my best stand of trees. So Gil gets mad and won't let Lucy marry me. And Lucy ran away, because she figured one of us would wind up getting killed. We did come mighty near it. It's been bad blood between us ever since. Looks like my coming here hasn't helped things any. Maybe I'd better clear out. You ain't gonna let Gil scare you. No, it isn't Gil. What is it, then? Well, it's, it's just that... Well, you know how it is when you hear about a place and then you find it. It isn't exactly like you pictured it. What did you expect out here in the wilderness? A job. A job? My mother used to tell me about your tan bark business. Tan bark? No wonder you're disappointed. Come out here and find all I'm doing is trying to kill a mountain lion. Well, aren't you? Sure. Then I'll get them, too. But that don't mean I'm out of business. See, the depression hit me kind of hard. But the fact is, as soon as I get that cat, I'll be needing somebody like you to help me gather the bark. You will. If you'll stick it out till we fill an order, you got yourself a job. Well, sure I will. Thanks, Mr. Eggers. There's one thing we got to get straightened out right now. If you and I are going to work together, you got to start calling me Tom. All right, Tom. Good. You know anything about tan bark? No, not very much. Well, you better climb out of those Sunday clothes. If you're going to be a peeler, you got to learn how to strip the bark. Yes, sir. I'll sharpen up an axe for you. <laughs>
Didn't you get through work kind of early? <laughs> After you left, Gil got us all fired mad. He went home. Oh. No. We thought maybe you and Danny'd like to have supper with us. Well, that's mighty nice of you, but we uh, got, a, got a lot of work to do, and... Um... Well, then at least you can eat the lunch I fixed for you. Oh, Here. well, thank you. Where's Danny? In the house. May I take it in for you? Well, that's a... Oh, all right. That child. Excuse me, I... I didn't mean to burst in on you like this, but... Tom asked me to bring in the basket. Oh, well, thanks. Uh, would you put it on the desk? Mr. Turner, you mind if I call you Danny? Uh, no, of course not. You can call me Doris. Uh, all right. Are you going to be here long? Oh, I hope so. Why? Well, there's uh, going to be a dance up at school next week. Maybe you'd like to to go. <laughs> sure. Wood and Jim want to take me, but I haven't made up my mind. Oh, maybe we could all go together. We? Oh, you mean if we all went together, you wouldn't be afraid? What's there to be afraid of? Well, the cougar. He's out raiding nearly every night. But you wouldn't be scared, would you? You're awfully brave. No, I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> What's that? I stood for this long enough. You had your chance, Tom Eggers. Now I'm going after that cat. What happened? He pulled down my best mare last night, and she was in foal. Danny, get my rifle and some cartridges. Yes, sir. We'll all go. Leave the horses here. They won't be any good in the hills. You and Doris go on home. I don't know when I'll be back. All right. Here, get along there. Don't forget, whoever brings down that cat gets $150 bounty money. Don't start spending it until you got it in your pocket. Here you are. That that one. Give me the 30-30. I'd have to be breathing down that cat's neck to get him with a 22. So Cousin Daniel don't even know it. A 22 from a 30-30. Well, both of them are guns, ain't they? They go bang when you shoot them. Cut it out. Stop it. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, both of you. Danny Hedge in the city, he'd make you look like a couple of dunces. Wait! Him! His den was around here, Summers. It is. He's got a hunting range of over 30 miles. We'll be lucky if we pick up his track by sunset. Just found it. Spike must 
have him cornered. Sure messing up this hunt. Why don't you go home? Here's your pea shooter. Think it's safe to give it to him? You might shoot off his foot. On account of it whittled. There goes Spike up the hill again. <laughs> with Matt. How about you, Danny? I can smell supper from here. I think it's wonderful that you're going to stay here, Danny. I have a lot of things planned for us to do. In the fall, we can go berry picking and, and duck shooting. Do you like duck shooting? Well, I've, I've... And in the winter, we can always go skiing and, and skating on the lake. Do you like to skate? Well, and then we can always go ice fishing. I bet you that's something you've never done. And then there's sleigh rides and, and dances. Whoa, and... whoa, whoa, Doris. You got Danny Plum Tucker down. Well, my goodness, he has to have something to do. Well, I guess my new job will keep me pretty busy. Do you have a job? Uh-huh. That's something I've always wanted to do. A chance to work out of doors, up in the hills, right in the middle of a forest. Of course, I, I don't know much about the business yet, but Tom's promised to teach me. Danny, will you have some more pie? Oh, no, thanks. But it was awfully good. Mom made it from the last of the dried apples. We were saving them for a guest, like we got tonight. Well, if nobody wants us, I'll just send it along to Tom. Matt, get me that dish of butter from the cooling house, will you? And I'll need a paper sack for the eggs. Now, there was something else if I can just get on. I've got something to show you. Mom made it for the school dance. Don't you think it's pretty? Yes. Do you know what a peeler is? A peeler? He strings the bark from the hemlocks after they're cut. I'm going to wear a blue ribbon in my hair to match the dress. Don't you think that'll be nice? Sure. 
I guess there's a lot to learn about the tan bark business. What tan bark business? Well, Tom's. Are you crazy? Tom hasn't been in business for years. Well, I know that. He told me about the depression. It wasn't the depression. I just love to dance in a dress that, that twirls when I twirl. What do you mean it wasn't the depression? Well, somebody invented a synthetic tannin that was better than they could get from bark. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. You know, I just adore waltzing. It's so romantic. But my mother told me that Tom had a lot of men working for him. We well, did, but they all moved away. Then after they'd gone, there was a big pile of tan bark left. And then one night, Tom burned it. It made the most beautiful bonfire. I love bonfires, don't you? Doris, for goodness sakes, put that dress away. Is this what you want, Mary? Yes, thanks. Doris, get me a clean napkin. I think I'll just put in the rest of this bread. Mom's always worried about Tom not having enough to eat. Tom pays for everything he gets. Oh, sure. Tom wouldn't accept charity. Tom's the handiest man in these parts. He mends all our fences and chops our wood. He's the best rancher around here if his land wasn't so poor. He didn't buy the land for ranching in the first place. He bought it for timber. Yeah, now he can't do nothing with that, so he's having a pretty bad time of it. Pop says all he lives on now are hopes and dreams. I see. Looks like I've had it all wrong. Now, Danny. Don't let it get you down. Nothing lasts forever. Just remember, time changes things. Yeah. But I can't wait that long. Well, I guess I better be going. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you. The dance is next Saturday night. I'm afraid I, I won't be here next Saturday. But you said... I know. But I'm leaving in the morning. Thanks for everything. Come on, I'm doing all the work here. Give me a hand. Bike. Go get me the axe. That's right. Get it. That's a boy. Now bring it here, Spike. Bring it here. That's a boy. Go over and lay down, Spike. So I'm no hunter. Where's Tom? What's the matter? Didn't he come home last night to tuck you in? <laughs> no. Uh, I thought I might find him here. No. Run around on Tom, are you? <laughs> What'd I tell you, boys? I said, as soon as he finds out Tom ain't got enough to feed a dog, you come a running to his uncle Gil. I'm not running to you or anybody else. Uh, of course not, boy. Of course not. Just being sensible. <laughs> Where's Tom? I came to tell him I'm leaving. I'll tell him next time I see him. With Jim. Cousin Daniel's coming to live with us. I want you boys to get along. Take his suitcase, coat, put him in the wagon. I'm not coming with you. I wouldn't stay with you if I were starving. 
After the way you treated my mother, I ought to... What do you mean the way I treated your mother? What did she do to me? Walked out on me, she did, and left me with all sure of... Sure she did, because you wouldn't let her marry Tom. Of course I wouldn't let her marry no bull-necked, stubborn fool like Tom Eggers. What did you say? You heard me, and I'll say it again. started this fight. Shoot, I'll be aiming. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Scrapping like a pack of dogs. Tom, you and Danny get home. This is my property. Ain't you forgetting this is my gun? fair fight. You didn't do so badly yourself. Oh. Uh, you know, that's a pretty deep cut you've got there, Tom. Hadn't you better see a doctor? Oh, sure. Run right over. Closest one's only 30 miles away. Oh. Let me have a look at that ear of yours. Hurt? Oh. Uh, it's not so deep. I guess you'll live all right. Get some cups. Let's have a little coffee. Hey. What were you doing up at that dam, anyhow? Looking for you. 
I'm leaving. Leaving? I thought you'd made up your mind to stay. I, I changed my mind. Look, Tom, what's the use of kidding yourself? You can't build up a business out of hopes and dreams. Who have you been talking to, Gil? No, Matt. Ah, Matt's crazy. Look, if they've got a synthetic tanning, nobody's gonna need that bark of yours. You think I lied to you about those orders? No, it's just that maybe the tanners sent those orders before they'd seen this chemical. Uh-huh. Take a look at them. There's one in there that's only three months old. I don't get it. Isn't the synthetic tanning any good? Well, it's all right for some hides, but not for the real fine skins. I knew it as soon as I saw the skins. That's why I've been trying to hang on. Well, then what's holding you back? I'm broke. I can't hire anybody. I thought maybe if you and I could work together, we could get out enough bark to fill those orders. Do you think we could? Sure. Be a little tough till the depression and the drought breaks. At least you'd have a roof over your head and some venison to eat. Danny, tell you what I'll do. You throw in with me now, and when business picks up, make him my partner. Partner? Mm-hmm. If I'd have married your mother, I might have had a son like you. She named me after you. She did. Daniel Thomas Turner. Thomas. Cloud on the mountain. Thomas. Daddy. There's $150 bounty on that cat. You help me get him, and we'll split. You mean if we get him, we'll have $150 to put into the business? <laughs> what do you say, son? How about climbing out of those Sunday clothes and let's go get that cat? It's a deal. shooting galleries. Okay, Danny, I got him. Give me a hand, will you? I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't pull the trigger. <laughs> you had buck fever, that's all. Be kind of tough dressing them out of here. I guess we better get him back to the house. Go throw a rope on that horse in the pasture and bring him up here, will you? I don't know how to rope a horse. <laughs> That's okay, son. I'll go. 
You stay here, but keep your eyes peeled for that cat. around here. Not a you should be around here with a sprained back. Why didn't you dress him first? You made him lighter by 30 or 40 pounds. There. Put that loop on him. Right on the horns. Follow that, man. Yes. They'll turn into calluses pretty soon. Well, gotta get to work. Go mat a couple of steaks, and we can use some of that meat for supper. I don't think I want any. I, I'm not much of a meat eater. Well, listen, Danny. If you're gonna live out here, you'll have to get over that notion, or you might not eat regular. I don't like killing any better than you do. And I've never done it unless it was some varmint like a rattlesnake or a cougar. Or something I needed to eat. You know, uh, if some of us didn't cut down on the deer and the cats, they'd overrun the country so bad you couldn't raise a stalk of corn or a single head of cattle. It's a funny thing, but the, the balance of nature gets unbalanced sometimes. And I suppose maybe it's man's fault, but there's one thing I know for sure. That meat was put here for us to eat. Besides, any deer I go hunting for has got a lot better chance to die of old age than some steer cooped up in the stockyard. How about give me a hand dressing out that butt? Yes, sir.
there. He's dead. The cat got him. No, don't look. The inside a person wants to remember. He must have been out of his head to go after a cougar with a 22. trying to get him killed. Without a dog, he hasn't got a chance. You know as well as I do that Tom left everything to Lucy, and with Danny out of the way, you'd get that property you've been wanting for the past 20 years. I wanted that property for over 20 years, but not that bad. He could have the dog.
You go belittling what your cousin done. He's your own blood kin. Well, we said he was a hawks. It's more I'm gonna do something real nice for him. But 
take this property off his hands. And at a good price. Thanks, but I'm not selling. Not selling? You ain't aiming to stay. I sure am. I've got $150 coming for this. And I'm going into the tan bark business, Uncle Gil. Uncle Gil. You're going into the tan bark business? <laughs> Why? Goodness sake. Yeah. Uncle Gil. Come on, Doris. Hey, hey. Hold on, you two. Ain't you just a little too young to go traipsing around without a chaperone? Well, it's like you said, Matt. Time changes things. Even here. Matt. It's the end of the drought. each of us is willing to forgive his enemy, then maybe you'll see fit to end this drought. If you keep my commandments and do them, then I will give your rains in due season. And the land shall yield its increase. And I will give peace to the land. 